What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory School and Marina. Today's video discussion is per request of one of our viewers. Now if you followed this series that we've done on training videos as far as video discussion, stuff like that, the other day we posted one that said nitrox is a myth and we went through and we showed you all the things about nitrox that a lot of times people get misunderstood about. And one of our viewers actually wanted us to post a video on the benefits of nitrox and why a diver would choose to use it over standard breathing gas or standard air. So we thought we'd take a few minutes here and discuss some of the benefits that nitrox gives us and we're going to go into detail in each one and discuss exactly how it's a benefit for you and whether or not you should or should not use it. So once again, nitrox, when we talk about nitrox, all that is is any gas blend, any air blend that has been enriched with oxygen. So even our standard breathing gas, which is 21%, is technically 21% enriched air or 21% nitrox. Now we typically, as a, a industry standard, anything above 21 is what we classify as nitrox or enriched air, but just any gas blend that has O2 infused into it, then that is enriched air. But we're going to look at a 22 up to a 40% blend, which is our recreational limitations, when we talk about nitrox. So the first big benefit that we need to understand is it extends our no decompression time. Now the other day I told you it does not give you more time underwater and what I meant by that is it does not give you any more air time because the volume of the gas in your tank does not change. You're going to have the same amount of air and depending on what your air consumption rate is you may not be able to make that tank last the whole entire time of your no decompression limit. But let's say that you could make it last because you have a very low sac rate or you have a sufficient amount of air to stay that whole entire time. We can actually extend the no decompression time simply meaning we can stay longer with a sufficient amount of air source because we're not collecting or absorbing, if you will, too much nitrogen. So with that higher partial pressure of O2, our absorption of nitrogen actually slows down. So that does give us more no decompression time underwater. Once again, that's only if we have a sufficient amount of air or gas to stay there the entire length of that no decompression time. The next one, of course, is shorter surface intervals. So we all know that surface intervals is the amount of time that we're at the surface between the first dive and the second dive, or say the second dive and third dive, or third dive and fourth dive. It's the amount of time we spend at the water in between two consecutive dives. Now, what do we calculate as a consecutive dive? Typically speaking, anything 12 hours and less is considered a consecutive dive. Sometimes dive computers extend that a little bit longer. They'll say a 24 hour period, and that's for our no fly time versus our desat or desaturation time. But we're gonna look at it just basically in between two consecutive dives, that is our surface interval. Now the purpose of that surface interval is to bleed off nitrogen to kind of give us more room for nitrogen to absorb into us during the next dive without getting super saturated or over absorbed with too much nitrogen. So if during that first dive I took on a little bit more oxygen, I eliminated some of the nitrogen because I'm taking on a higher partial pressure of oxygen, that means the residual nitrogen is going to be lower after a nitrox dive than what it was after an air dive and that shortens the time in between dives at the surface and it gets me back in the water a lot quicker than what it would if I was breathing regular air. So it does shorten my, no, or my surface interval because I don't have quite as much absorption of nitrogen as what I would if I was on plain air. The next one, accidental deco advantage. Now, nitrox does not allow us to go into decompression, but how if we're in an accidental decompression mode, if you will, or we accidentally extended our time more than we should, how does that help us? Well, the first thing that we need to understand is the absolute safest way to dive nitrox is simply to dive nitrox, whatever blend, say a 22 to a 40% blend, stay well within our maximum operating depth, 
But instead of using Nitrox standards, such as on your computer, or Nitrox tables if you're planning on using the tables, we actually use air tables or we leave our computer in air mode. And what that does is, is since the air standards both on the table and the computer is a lot more conservative than what the Nitrox tables are, then that's going to keep us even safer. Now, if we're using air standards, and it gives us less time underwater, let's say that we accidentally exceed that time, that no decompression limit, say a couple of minutes. Th then technically, if you were on air, then you would be in a decompression situation. But since we're on nitrox and we're diving to air standards, then that accidental deco kind of goes away because now you're no longer in deco because you are taking on a higher percentage of oxygen. Bear in mind, we still have to stay well within our maximum operating depth for everything to be good and safe for us. Now, why would a diver want to dive nitrox to air standards when the nitrox gives us more time underwater? Well, it's simple. Most of the time, you're going to be able to, or you're going to run out of air before you ever hit your no decompression limit unless you have a sufficient amount of gas that you're taking with you, such as running doubles, or if you're on side mount and you have two tanks under your arm, or unless you take an extra bottle with you, most of the time you're going to run out of air before you ever reach your no decompression limit. Let me give you another example. Us as instructors, let's say that we've got a big class, we got about 10 students with us and we're doing checkout dives, and we take two or three down at a time, so we're going down, doing some emergency skills or whatnot, bringing those students up the line, and then we get the next few students in the water and we're going down doing some skills, doing some emergency skills, bringing them up, and we get them out of the water and we bring in the third group in. As you can see, a dive instructor's profile is usually pretty hectic. We're constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down if we have a lot of students. And you can just imagine what our saturation rate of nitrogen is on an any given day. Now, versus from us teaching to us just diving, when we go diving, we're not doing that up-down profile. Basically, we're getting in the water, we're descending to our maximum depth that we want to go to, we're playing around for a little bit, exploring, coming up to a slightly shallower depth, exploring a little bit more, and then coming up for our safety stop and then into the dive. However, as us as instructors, we're constantly going up and down, up and down, up and down. So the saturation of nitrogen that we take in is absolutely crazy. So if we use nitrox instead of air, then that saturation of nitrogen gets tumbled down a little bit and we're taking on more oxygen than what we normally would on air. So the benefit of breathing nitrox to air standards helps us out as as instructors, and it could help you out too. If you're doing a working dive, maybe you're doing a search and recovery dive or something like that, you're going to be taking on more oxygen so that no decompression limit as far as the air standards, which is the most conservative for nitrox, is going to be extended. So if you accidentally go beyond that no decompression limit, then you're still going to be okay during your ascent, and you're 99.999% of the time not going to get decompression sickness. Now, the claim that it makes divers not as tired, now this is a claim. The Divers Alert Network, or DAN, has put out multiple studies on this, and there's really no concrete evidence that breathing nitrox makes a diver feel better, or it helps them not be quite as tired after a dive. And I believe the reason that a lot of people say that is it is a mental thing. Some people say, yeah, it does make me feel better. There's divers like me that I cannot tell a difference on nitrox or air. And I've made thousands and thousands of air dives and I've made thousands and thousands of nitrox dives. And I really cannot tell a difference. So I believe it's a mental thing between individual divers. Some people, if it makes you feel better, then definitely dive it. You know, if it doesn't, then then still dive it. It doesn't really matter, but that's kind of an advantage to, for some people with that higher partial pressure of O2, it makes them feel better. Now, why do divers say that a lot of times? Once again, in my opinion, I think it's a mental thing, but I will state this. I am a medical professional here in North Carolina. I'm a certified EMT for the state and for my local fire department. And, you know, one of the things that we do is we treat patients on land with supplemental O2. 
So if they're having breathing difficulties or they're in shock, we'll throw a non-rebreather on them, crank that O2 up and let them breathe. And it does help perfuse the oxygen throughout their blood a little bit easier and it does make them feel better. But when you're underwater and you're diving, you have to understand water is 800 times more dense than what air is. And you're trying to move your body through that median or that material that is 800 times more dense. So you are working yourself 800 times harder than what you would up here on land. So whether that oxygen helps you in that working environment, such as kicking, depending on how you kick, um, whether it makes you feel better, that is completely up to you. But once again, there's no scientific study or concrete evidence that says that is the case. So guys, I hope this kind of gives you uh, some pointers here as far as why nitrox is good for you, what the advantages are, whether you do want to extend your no decompression limit maybe your side mount diving you got two bottles with you or maybe you got doubles on your back and you do have a sufficient amount of air and you want to extend that no decompression limit then yeah nitrox is definitely going to be better for you plus it's going to shorten or it's going to slow down the saturation of nitrogen within your body Shorter surface intervals, since we did shorten up how much nitrogen we absorb during that dive, it's also going to shorten how long we have to stay out of the water in between dives, so that actually gets us into water a little bit quicker than what it normally would. Accidental deco purposes, if we're diving nitrox to the most conservative way of doing it, such as using your nitrox blend, staying well within your maximum operating depth, but using air standards, which is a lot more conservative than nitrox standards, in the event that you was to violate your no decompression limit on the air standards, then you're going to be okay because you're actually breathing nitrox, not air. Just remember, when you plan that dive, go ahead and plan it in the nitrox mode to see what your max is, but dive it to the air standards, and that will be the most conservative for you. And then of course, some divers make the claim that it makes them feel better, some divers say not, but hey, if it makes you feel better, then by all means, dive nitrox. Guys, if you got any questions, I'd really like to see a big discussion down below in the comments. The video that I did on the miss of nitrox sparked quite a few discussions on there. And that's what we want. We want you guys out here discussing this stuff. I want to know your opinions on this. Um, if you got any questions for me directly, simply put it down in the comment section below. I promise you I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. We're very busy this time of the year. Right now we currently have a little over 40 some students that's taking different classes. But I will get back to your question just as quickly as I can. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.